Oh, great. Um, Mike, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our fourth um, session of the MBA for Africa, M4A for short. Um, I'll just take a few. Um, I'll just take, take a few um, seconds to really talk about Lena and what we're doing here. But just before I get into that, just a few um, reminders on, on our webinar logistics. Um, question and answer at the end um, of the conversation, but you cannot drop your you can drop your questions on the chat while the conversation is going on. Be respectful and supportive. Turn on cameras. Um, fill out the attendance form, and um, so that you'll be able to also access um, the fee waiver. Then remain on mute except like you have contributions to make to the conversation. Um, LANE, which stands for Light African Network, it's a platform where we are leveraging the power of community to support you on your MBA journeys. So our aim is to help you achieve your most honorable goal of uh, attending a top um, MBA programs. Um, we are delighted to you know follow you through this um, journey right from well, when you conceive the idea of business school to so your business school days as a student and even and, and on now. So um, M4A, which is MBA for Africa, is one of the conversations, uh, one of our programs where we engage admission committees uh, and current students to share their experience. Um, so the web, it actually aims to bridge the gap between Africans and business schools um, by partnering with admission officers across like the top um, 100 global MBA program. The series provides Africans um, with the resources and knowledge they need to understand the MBA experience and even the application processes for different um, MBA. Um, what to expect um, for this year's um, MBA for Africa series, um, we'll be bringing 12 um, global MBA programs. This is the fourth. So the conversation would um, started this month, August, and it will run to next month, September. And our meeting days will Time will be 8 p.m. and it will often be on weekends, um, 8 p.m. West African time. And why you should attend, you get free application fee waivers for attending and um, filling the attendance form. You will get an opportunity to connect with um, outcomes and then to also learn from current um, African students. Then you get general tips for your MBA application that will even be relevant for your application to other schools. Um, I would hand over to Alamide, the uh, head of programs, to introduce our speaker. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fosa. Thank you so much, Okwe. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Olamide. I am the head of programs and also the lead for MBA for Africa. I'm super, super excited that we have a new partner joining us this year, and that is University of California, Ivan, um, Paul Mirage School of Business. Um, I would love to introduce Lisa Shulman. She is the manager for MBA and special specialty master's program and strategic in, in, initiatives at UCI. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us. Um, we're excited to have you. We're also excited to have an alumni or anyone that you actually have on board that would be able to share more insights about how unique UCI is, your program often, and why it is very, very important for Lane members and also prospective African students to be able to know more about your program. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. So nice to see you all uh, and see so many boxes popping up. Um, Zoom is a great way to connect. 
and hopefully one day I'll get to see you in person uh, outside of our uh, our Zoom boxes. Um, so I'll first just say a quick hello about UCI, um, which is University of California, Irvine. We are located in Southern California. It's between Los Angeles and San Diego. Not everyone knows where we are, but they're really nice spots. Um, out here right now, we're having a tropical storm, but usually it's sunshine and really great weather and not a lot of humidity, which is nice. Um, we have a bunch of programs, but we're going to focus on the MBA today. Um, and just mentioning them so you know, if you're interested, my email will be at the end. Uh, you can connect with me. Um, but we do a full-time MBA. We do a part-time MBA. Uh, we do an executive MBA, which um, is for people who have been working for 10 to 15 years. We also have four specialty master programs, which are just year-long programs that focus on a specific topic. So we have one in finance, one in uh, accounting, one in analytics, and one in innovation and entrepreneurship. I bring that up because as an MBA student, you can actually take electives in any of the master's courses we offer, which is really cool. Um, so if you do want to customize your program and try something different, you can do so. But with that being said, we're here to talk about uh, the MBA program and how to have a really great application. So I'm going to have a quick, hopefully everyone can see my screen, which I'm going to, yes, we can all see it. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so hi, I'm Lisa. This is our lovely presentation. Uh, at any point, uh, oh no, we're going to do questions at the end, so never mind. Um, so I'm just going to go through a little briefly about the MBA program in more detail, um, and I'm happy to again answer questions at the end. Uh, I had asked an alum to join us today, uh, but I don't think they could make it, but I do want to say at the end of the presentation, I will have my email address out, um, and if you want to email me and get connected with current students. I can definitely do that for you. During the summers, our current MBA students actually are on internships, so they're actually off campus right, right now and having a really great time, um, but I'm happy to connect you with them in a couple weeks when they get back. So with that being said, you're all here because you're obviously thinking about an MBA, but why are people thinking about an MBA right, right now? Um, in June of 2028 or 2018, uh, a colleague did a quick survey just to see what was going on, and we found some interesting results um, as to why people are doing an MBA. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going <clears> to <throat> lose my voice in the morning. So we found that 57% of, of applicants desired to acquire <clears throat> new skills and knowledge about business. They wanted to accelerate their career. They wanted to break into a new industry or a new function. Um, but we also found out that about 38% wanted to also increase their earning potential, increase their salary, which is a big important part of getting your MBA. It brings you to that next level, which is great. Uh, and then 35% wanted to pursue an MBA to make a positive difference in the world and improve society. Um, and then the rest wanted, again, acquire new business skills, be adaptive, be flexible, all these great things. So there's a lot of reasons why you might be thinking why an MBA, they are all correct. There is no wrong reason. With that being said, you guys are here to learn about UCI's MBA specifically. There's a lot of great MBAs out there. There's a lot that you have options to, and you really want to take time to do your research so you find the one that is the best fit. So before you apply, start considering different things. A big one is considering timing. Is this the right time in your personal life? If you are married, if you have a family, if you have significant others, chat with them because this program affects them too. You'll be two years in a program. They might be working, they might be taking care of the kids because you might be doing a lot more stuff. So think about that, bring them into the conversation. It's an important conversation to have. Uh, um, is it time for a big change? Is this time that you want to change industries? Do you want to change your functional roles? Um, and what kind of program are you looking for? Do you want it to be fully immersive? Do you want to have clubs and leaderships? All that good stuff. And the most important thing outside of timing, outside of what you want to do in your career, is to really do your research and figuring out where you want to be. What location do you want your graduate school to be in? Does it have a good ranking or reputation? Um, does the culture of the campus fit you and make you feel like you're at home? My biggest advice is chat with alumni, chat with current students. And again, we can get you in touch with those uh, as well. Um, and talk to those people to make sure that the culture on the campus the program itself, the courses that are there are really what you are looking for. In addition, I said location earlier, a big part of that is what companies are in the area. Where do they recruit? Where are they finding their employees? Do you want to be in that school that has that? Um, UCI is a great choice. Um, we are ranked number 37 amongst all full-time MBA programs in the U.S. that was ranked out this year, which is really, really exciting. Uh, the other thing to mention, I didn't know this until I came out here. I'm from New York originally, so I don't know California in the same way a lot of my colleagues do. It was news to me, but when I started doing research 
for my position coming here, I found out that one third of the Fortune 500 companies call Orange County home, which is huge. We'll go into that a little bit more later in our presentation, but literally in the backyard, we have that many uh, companies represented, which means there's a lot of great opportunities for networking with companies to find jobs later on, which is huge. Um, I mentioned earlier, finding a great school that has the right cultural fit and core values. Um, Mirage itself is very tight knit um, and it's very engaged. It's very diverse uh, and it's very uh, personalized. That means if you love team-based um, activities, if you love collaborating, if you love working on a cohort, this is a great program for you. If you are someone who likes to do their own thing and likes to work independently, this might not be the best program for you. And that's okay. There's probably great programs out there that is for you. But Mirage definitely does a lot of uh, group activities and work to kind of work together, bring each other up together, be successful together and learn from one another. And we think that makes a really well-rounded student in the end. And fun fact, we are number one globally for a percent of women faculty, which is really, really cool and really, really huge. And most of our business programs are about 50% women, 50% men. So we're really proud of that gender parity as well. Now, when it comes to coursework and what the MBA looks like, um, you'll have a unique set of experiences and opportunities that will kind of set you apart and distinguish you as a leader in a digitally driven world. Everything now is online. The fact that we can do this conversation where I'm in California and you guys are all over the place over in, I'm assuming West, East, um, all over Africa, we couldn't do this before. So you wanna make sure that you are a leader in the digitally driven world because everything now is digital. Um, and no matter your background, no matter your past experiences, you'll be able to thrive as a leader at UCI and we'll teach you some great uh, skill set and great skills to be able to be innovative, to be able to be successful and really you know, take your career to the next level. So this program is two years long. In between year one and year two, you do have an internship uh, requirement, um, which is pretty easy to get and I'll talk about in a second. But year one is pretty straightforward. You do a lot of your core classes, um, as you can see on the screen. Uh, and you also have something called a career professional development pro seminar. Pro Seminar is just a class that is taught by our career services team. You as an MBA student have a dedicated career services team member that helps you throughout the program. They will work with you on everything from as simple as, you know, a resume building workshop or mock interview sessions, but they'll also sit and chat with you and prep you for that job interview, prep you for your internship, prep you for negotiating and having a salary, salary negotiating skill workshop. So there's a lot of great stuff that they work with you and you have access to them throughout the entire uh, program that you're there. Second year, you do a little bit uh, something different. Um, you kind of jump into your electives and some specializations, which we'll go into on the next slide. This is really where you get to customize your program. A lot of people are looking into either pivoting their career or taking that next step in what they currently are at. And so that means everybody wants something different and everyone's gonna focus on something different, which is pretty cool. Um, so we leave the electives up to you. We wanna make sure that you are taking the courses you need to be successful and you can very much customize all the electives to what you feel you need to be a leader in a digitally driven world and in the future. Um, summer, as I mentioned, uh, you guys get to do an internship. Everyone asks, how do I find that internship? It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, at the start of the year, every single MBA student is sponsored to visit one conference throughout the year. Um, these conferences are for MBA students. And at these conferences, you are coming together in one place with a whole bunch of really, really great people and a whole bunch of really great companies. And you just kind of meet the companies, you do interviews and you get an internship literally from attending these conferences, which is really, really great. Uh, I'm actually going to my first conference this year to see what it's like uh, in September every year. Uh, in the US, we have something called National Black MBA Association Conference. This year it's in Philadelphia and I'll be going and having a booth there. And uh, our MBA students will be going to the conference as well. They'll be hanging out at the booth and then visiting the different employers and checking it out and hopefully getting really great internships from that. So that's really, really cool. Um, so with that being said, when we talk about electives, what does that mean? We're gonna have lots of different electives, but you can also focus on immersion. So we have four tracks that you can focus on. One is innovation entrepreneurship. One is, the second is real estate and urban development. The third is healthcare management and policy. And the last is digital transformation. So with your electives, you can do four different kinds of immersions and kind of focus on that and go into one of those fields. If you're thinking, I wanna do a little bit of everything, I don't wanna be pigeonholed into 
one thing, you can do that as well. Um, here's just a big sampling of elective courses we have. It's a little bit of everything, but like I said, the point of the second year is really to customize your electives and your courses and make it um, a program that you need to be successful in the future, which is really cool. So with that being said, um, our classes itself are delivered by faculty who come from a wide range of industry. Um, some have been teachers for their whole lives and are really, really great and can help you academically. Some have worked in the field themselves, have been CEOs, CFOs. They know what it's like to be in the industry. They know what it's like to want to advance. And they're really, really helpful in making sure they impart their wisdom onto you so you can be a uh, just as awesome and just as, as skilled as well. Um, there's a couple of cool things that we have in addition um, to, I said, the internships and the electives, uh, but we do have global immersion programs. So there's optional courses. Uh, they are about a week long. One's usually in December and one's in during spring break. Uh, and you get to go overseas to a different uh, location and actually just learn from the business world overseas. This year, they're doing Singapore and Vietnam. So students will go with a faculty member to Singapore and to Vietnam. That faculty member usually is from there, usually you know, has worked there. And it gives you a really great sense of how to be a leader in a global world and not just a local world, which is nice. So you kind of get to see how business works on big scale and globally, which helps a lot of students kind of hone in on what they want to do and some extra skills. Uh, in addition, we talked about internships, but also throughout the year, there'll be a lot of great competitions and extracurricular activities going on at Mirage. Um, there's case competitions, which students can kind of work together on teams and come up with an idea. Basically, the competition will say, we want to hear your ideas about X, Y, and Z. Students will come together as teams, think of really great answers for that, present them, and there's usually cash, cash prizes, which is really cool and a nice little gift because we could all use more cash. That's never a bad thing. Um, in addition to that, Mirage is a huge business school. Like I said, there's seven programs and undergraduate programs, so there's constantly networking options going on, guest speakers coming in, um, huge just workshops always being held, and they're open to you at any time. You can do as much as you want. You can do as little as you want. I definitely recommend going to as many events and guest speakers as you can because you never know who you're going to meet. Networking is key. Um, and the more you network, the more, you know, you never know who leads or what networking conversation leads to a job opportunity. With that being said, um, Mirage is home to over 400 clubs uh, on campus. Um, there's a consulting group, there's a healthcare association, there's a vet group. Um, there's a lot of different things going on. And these groups are open to you at any time. If you don't see a group you like, you can create a group, which is nice. I actually had a student this last year who wanted to get into enter the entertainment industry, and she did not see anything at Mirage in the entertainment industry. And so she created her own group that was like business in, in entertainment. And she hosted a lot of events. She had guest speakers come and it was really cool. So if you don't see something you like, you can create it, but there's a lot that is going on. And again, we invite you to come to all of these great events. We actually had a student come to one of our events um, last year. He actually met someone who said, you know what? I don't have a job for you, but I know someone who does. Um, and they connected them, and he actually now has an internship at Microsoft, which is cool. So networking is key, and you never know who you're going to meet. And I don't know if I just missed something from the group. We good? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, did I miss anything? I talk a lot, and, you know, but that is why we're here. So with that being said, I gave you a quick overview of what the MBA program is what it's like to be at UCI and what Mirage has to offer you. But now is the fun nitty gritty stuff, which is what I think many of you might be here for is just how do I submit a really, really great application? What are you guys looking for at Mirage? What should my application look like? So the ideal Mirage candidate for our MBA program has about two to eight years of work experience. Uh, as you can see, they, we have a class profile up here. The average this last year was five years. Um, but again, two years, you're still fine. Eight years, you're still fine. Don't think that because you're on either end of the spectrum, you are not qualified. You completely are. Uh, we do look for candidates who have strong uh, leadership skills uh, and quantitative skills. Uh, of course, communication skills are very, very important. We want you to be able to communicate with us what your goals are, what you're looking for, why the MBA program, and most importantly, what you want to do in the future. That really helps us see you as an applicant and see what your goals are. Um, analytical mindset was always really helpful because there will be a lot of data and a lot of numbers uh, in this now digitally world that we live in. Um, and as I mentioned before, and the reason why we do 
the international trips, but have a inclusive and global mindset. Everybody uh, needs to be counted. Everybody needs a seat at the table. And we want to make sure everyone has a microphone to be a part of that. So that is really, really important to us and really important to our students as well. Um, again, the nice thing, I think a lot of people assume, oh, I must have to have a business background to come and get my MBA. That is not the case at all. We have people from literally every industry known to man, financial services, government, technology, entertainment, marketing, consulting, everything under the sun we see students at. Um, our GPA averages, this is US GPA, about 3.4. But again, remember that means there are plenty of applicants below that and plenty of applicants above that. Um, what I always like to tell students, it's a little map. I hope you can see it. We'll have a bigger picture next. Uh, but there's a lot of great industry matches for our Mirage alumni. And that's why we love uh, UCI. We always get a little overshadowed by our sister schools, UCLA and Berkeley. They have the name recognition. Everybody knows UCLA. Everybody knows Berkeley. But UCI has something unique that those two don't have. And as I mentioned earlier, it's all the companies in our backyard. The little map that you see isn't obviously exactly to scale. It's not how all the organizations are. But all these organizations call Orange County home. Every single one has offices here. And that means that all those events I mentioned earlier and all those guest speakers, they're all coming from these companies. They're all coming right to our campus to have really great connections with our students and to hire our students because it's local and it's really easy for them. They love that they can just come to UCI, they get access to amazing students, and they can have some really, really great jobs. Um, and again, there are tons of different industries represented. There's Hyundai, which is a car company, Taco Bell, which is fast food. We have Amazon that's coming here down the street from us in a couple months. Um, but we also are very big in healthcare, very big in tech. Uh, Disney is down the street as well, which is a big one. So there is literally a little bit of everything for uh, anyone who's interested in terms of, okay, now that I have my MBA, what next? What's that next job? There's all these great partnerships here. Um, they come to our campus. And on top of that, the Career Center has really great relationships with all of these different companies. And they will host networking events. They'll host a career night where a lot of these companies will come in and have basically a big recruiter event. Their recruitment team will be at our school. And they're there to meet you guys and to chat with you and to hopefully find you a job and, and get you connected in that way. Uh, our alumni are now scattered throughout all these amazing companies you see on the screen. Uh, Kaiser Permanente, which is big in healthcare, KPMG, which is consulting, um, a lot of really, really great things that are out there. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't know what I want to do, that's okay. That's a good thing. Um, a lot of people do have a, a path and they know where they want to go, but some people don't and that's okay. I think that's a good thing. Um, a couple of alumni have shared with me that it's okay if you know you want an MBA, but you're not sure what you want that next job to be because the more open you are, the more people you'll meet at campus and the more options you'll have because you'll be really open to what's out there. So a lot of great things. Um, and what our MBAs are getting in terms of jobs after they're you know, students with us. Again, lots of different industries, as you can see here, some of the different titles and job, you know, positions they have right now. As you can see, there's consulting, finance, marketing, technology. Uh, and in general, a lot of people who are looking for that next leg up, it's a very much a leadership um, position. Uh, people become senior managers, CEOs, vice presidents, directors, and that's a really great thing to see as well. Um, so when it comes to making your application stand out, uh, we have a few tips, as you can see. I'm not going to read through every one of them because that's boring. That's no fun. I will just tell you what I look for in an application and what stands out to me. Um, we'll go over specifics on what you need to do with the application, but at one point you'll have to do an essay and a video essay. Those are the only two places in the entire application that we get to see you as you. You can't change your transcript. You can't edit your resume. You can't, I mean, I hope you're not editing it and making stories up and pretending that you did this job and that job. No, that doesn't work. Um, so you can't change that and you can't change letters of recommendation. Those come from someone else. So who do we sue? We want to see you. And those two essays are really where we get to see you as you because you're introducing yourself to us. You get to write the way you want to. You get to present on a video the way you want to. Um, and that to me is the selling point for us in terms of how do we find a good applicant. We can check off all the boxes with a good GPA and a good resume, but that is where we want to see you. So we want good communication skills, as I mentioned earlier. We want to see clear goals. That's really, really helpful. Sometimes we get people who just aren't sure what they want. They want to change in their career. They don't know what they want to do. And they think it must be going back to school. That must be the answer. But when they, we talk to them and they say, I just want my MBA and they don't know why, we then wonder why. We don't know if they'll be a good fit for us. So goals are very important. Why the MBA? Why now? 
and what you want to do with that in the future and why Mirage. Um, I do think research definitely helps and making sure you're clear in terms of you've done your research, you know why Mirage is a great choice for you. You know why you want UCI to be your home. That is all really, really important in terms of being an ideal candidate and letting us see you for you. Um, to give you some more, I guess, insight into what we look for, I have two examples. Obviously, all their information has been taken off except for a couple things just to show you that it really does vary and people come from a lot of different backgrounds. Uh, our first brief profile is an electrical engineer from UCLA, very good GPA, had three years of work experience, so on the earlier side, but still right, right in our sweet spot. Um, and they shared with us that they were looking for their MBA because they wanted to get away from engineering and pivot and doing something much more uh, different in terms of strategy and wants to work in project management management, excuse me, which was great. So we were like, awesome. When we read through their application and we did their interview, we thought they were a strong communicator. Um, they did really great research on Mirage and they had a really great presence over the screen, which again, it comes across. You don't think about it, but it really does come across over a video and it becomes very clear. Um, and we thought they would be a great fit. Um, and just to give you some background on their career, uh, they started out, as you can see, a technical sales associate um, and a software engineer. Their internship while they were with us in the summer was product management uh, with Verizon, which is exactly what they were looking for. And now this candidate is an experience um, and a director of strategic initiatives. So a really, really cool um, career highlights there. It started out again as an engineer, which is what they wanted. They wanted to pivot. They got some experience and now they're doing something different in the world they want. So really, really great. Mirage example number two, uh, as you can see, a political science background. So that's why I say any background is welcome in the MBA. There's no background that we go, oh, no, I, I don't think so. So political science, again, good GPA, has worked a little bit longer, um, but they were looking to join the MBA program because they wanted to get managerial skills. They wanted to become more of a leader, but they also wanted to pivot. They wanted to do something different and go into brand management. So again, a little bit of a different story, but a key here is pivoting and changing career. And I think that's important to keep in mind. A lot of people want to change and this is a great avenue to do that. Um, why Mirage? They wanted to come because of our emphasis in digital transformation, because of the location, because of our awesome uh, faculty and professors and the networking, which again is huge. Um, they started out for Coca-Cola during their uh, summer internship. They got to do brand management for Clorox and they now are at Mattel, which is the big uh, toy company who just did the Barbie movie. So they're very big right now and everybody now wants to work at Mattel, um, but they're an associate brand manager. So goals in tech had a really great uh, experience here and now they're doing what they had planned to do, which is really, really awesome to see. So we mentioned a lot of different things um, about the application. Admissions is something that everybody wants, of course, to know about the details. So our fall 2024 application deadlines um, are listed below. So this is for next fall. Um, we do the intake once a year, so keep that in mind. So it will be similar deadlines for every year if you're not looking at fall 24 and looking at fall 25, very similar timeline. Uh, applications should be available right now for fall 2024, if not, probably by September 1. But first deadline is November first. Um, expect to receive a decision if you do apply by the state by December 20th. So we do try to do a quick turnaround time. January 15th, next deadline. Um, again, receive a decision by March 4th, March 15th, excuse me. And March 1st, that's our final deadline for international applicants and you'd receive a decision by April 26th. The reason why March 1st is our final deadline is because we know for international students, you do have to go through the visa process and immigration process. We do walk you through that and help you as much as possible where we provide you all the information we can to work on your paperwork. We then connect you with our international center on campus. UCI is a huge school. There is quite a number of international students all over the place in all different departments and all different indus or industries, all different um, locations. And so we have literally an international center dedicated to helping our students get over to California from wherever they are coming from. And they will work with you to get you through that visa process and the I-20 process, which is really, really great and makes it hopefully a little less stressful for you guys. That being said, Application requirements, super important. Uh, transcripts, very, very straightforward. Um, GRE, GMAT tests, uh, it may be waived if you have two plus years of experience or you have at least a GPA of 3.0, so you might not have to take that score. If you still feel you want to take one of those exams and you feel it will make, <clears throat> excuse me, make your application stronger. We welcome you to submit it. But if you do check off one of those boxes, you don't have to. Um, TOEFL, if necessary, TOEFL is only necessary if you come from a university that was not taught in English. Um, and if you have questions specifically on that, you can email me at, at the end and we can chat. Um, resume, 
pretty straightforward. Two letters of recommendation. They can be academic or uh, professional, whichever you choose. Then we do two essays. One of that will be video, which I mentioned earlier, which again is a huge selling point because you really get to present to us yourself and in where you are. And again, use personality. Don't be too scared. Don't be too nervous. Have fun. Be loose. It lets us get to know you as a person as well, which is really important for us. Um, and then there's an interview by invitation only. We select the best of the best of our candidates to interview with us. It is over Zoom, kind of like this. Uh, and we just chat with you guys about your goals, your future, your background, all the normal stuff. So nothing to be too nervous about. Very straightforward. Uh, and we do offer scholarships. There are merit-based scholarships that are awarded upon admission. So if you do get admitted to the program, you get your email that says, yay, you've been admitted. And in that message also includes scholarship. So we do that all at once. There's not an extra application to do. There's nothing you have to worry about. It's all done at once. So with that being said, we do invite you for our next steps. A few things. One, you've connected with We Here, which is great, but sometimes you want to have more of a one-on-one -on -one time to ask some questions. And I know we're going to open it up, but sometimes it's hard to ask a question in a large setting like this. So we do have personal consultations that you can do a one-on-one -on -one chat with myself or another admissions uh, officer and just talk about your background, your experiences, your concerns. So that's really, really great. Second thing is, in addition to those consultations, we can connect you with student ambassadors. We have some really, really great ambassadors that um, our current students, and they can chat with you just about what the program's like, what it's like to be, you know, moving to Irvine from overseas, what culturally the fit is like, what classes are like, any recommendations they have. They're really, really great. This is part of their job is to be ambassadors and be connections to you guys. Um, and then lastly, here's my email address. Please feel free to email me at any time um, with any questions you have. If I can't answer them, I will get you in touch with someone who does, and I'd be happy to chat with you myself some more. Um, and I'm happy to chat just in general. So with that being said, I know I just talked a lot and I'm going to take a break for talking so you guys can ask some questions and we can jump in from there. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so, so much. Um, we have a couple of questions that have come in um, and I will shoot it here. I will just tell you, then you can actually just walk us through them. Um, so someone asked, are there merit-based scholarships sometimes off to full funding, like covering the entire cost of tuition or cost of attendance? That is a great question. So um, I love to be honest. So I hate being honest sometimes, but I'm going to be honest because there's no point in lying because we don't want you <laughs> to be led astray. We would rather have more students be able to come and be financially supported in a way than only a few students who get all the funding. So unfortunately, we don't have full rides as they call them over here. We don't have scholarships that cover every single thing, but we try to do our best to make sure all of our students are awarded something helpful and a large amount that will help them get here. Um, but we unfortunately don't have the funds to give out the free rides to everybody. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we do have a really great financial aid office uh, on campus who is there, again, just to work with our graduate students, which is awesome. It's not a group that works with everyone. It's just Mirage students and just Mirage grads. And we can also provide you some supplemental um, scholarships that would require extra um, scholarships or uh, scholarships. Wow, that was that. Extra <laughs> applications for these scholarships, not scholarships for scholarships. Um, and we have a lot of different you know, funding that we can connect you with that's outside of us. Um, and that should help hopefully uh, get you more funding as well. Great, thank you so much, Lisa. Just a follow-up question on that. You said there are opportunities for students to also get additional funding. So does this come through graduate assistantship, like EA, or what are the, some of like, the set of things that are there once you become a student? So it got really quiet at the end of your your sentence, so I didn't hear. Can you hear me? Okay, so yes, I, I said, can. just to follow up on that, um, are there graduate assistantships, TA opportunities for students to actually like do something on campus or work with like professors during their two years um, at UCI? Mm -hmm. That is a great question. So we are working on that is, is what I'll share. Um, oh, God, man. As, as um, we all know graduate assistantships, one, are great just for an opportunity to earn money, but it's also great for your resume and, resume. and connection. 
And what has happened in the past is this is a UC, University of California policy. It's not a policy we can control. It's the whole school system where only PhD students are allowed to have graduate assistantships and TA ships. But we are working with that department now to make sure it can someday be open to everyone. So I don't know when that will happen. I don't know if I can promise that to you, but I know we hear you, we agree with you, and we want to make those changes. But of course, it's out of our hands. Um, so do keep that in mind. However, with that being said, teaching, not teaching assistantships, research assistantships are something that you can look into. It's not an official program, but if you do some research and you see a faculty member that we have that is doing some amazing work and is doing stuff that you yourself want to be involved in and want to get in, they are the most friendly, open people. I suggest reaching out to them and sending them an email or connecting them with them when you get to campus and just say, hey, I'd love to do this. I'm looking at doing this, you know, work. Are you looking to bring on any research assistantships um, in the next semester or next year? And they'll be open with you and let you know, you know, what's on their plate and what they're looking for. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. So someone asked if your program is STEM, is a STEM program? Yes. So my program is my program. It's not mine personally. The MBA program is, I know, sorry guys, it's, it's fine, really. <laughs> I make all the decisions I wish. It, the MBA program is STEM designated, which is awesome. Um, we've made that change a few years ago because it is a huge field. It's an important field. And we want to make sure students have access to all the great resources that come with that. So yes, it is. And that's a great question. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, someone asked what the process of getting a GRE or a test waiver is like. That's a great question. So we want to make this process is easy for you as possible. So there's no special waiver. Um, if you have that work experience, the over two years work experience, automatically we're not gonna look for a GRE or GMAT to be submitted with your application. Same thing if you have the GPA above 3.0 or above, we're not gonna look for it. Um, so there's no waiver you have to fill out, nothing you have to do. If either one of those hits and is you, you don't have to do that. Um, if you are looking to get into a more STEM designated field and you feel your application maybe lacking in any way and you feel a GRE or a GMAT would help, by all means, like I said, go ahead, take it, submit it. And and if that adds to your application, that's great. But if you don't need it and you check off one of the two boxes I mentioned earlier, you know, don't worry about it. Your application should, I'm sure, speak for itself. And I think I saw a question earlier of GMAT or GRE. Doesn't matter. We don't have a preference. We know that everybody has preferences on their own, so we don't want to stop you. Um, but it can be either one that you want. Okay, awesome. So based on I'm that, gonna, so I'm going to repaste the email because I think I put the wrong email in. So I'm going to repaste my email into the message right now. Okay, great. Yeah, okay, sorry. that's perfect. Um, so someone asked a follow up question on that. Um, that does taking the GRE or GMAT increase your chances of scholarship just if they decide to use the waiver option? Now, that is a great question. So no, the GRE. I guess I will say this: we look at scholarship. Um in a holistic manner. So everything you submit is taken into account. Um, and if you don't submit that GMAT or GRE, you will not be penalized um, for in terms of scholarship for not submitting it. And just like the reverse, if you do submit it, you of course not necessarily will be given extra scholarship as well. The GMAT GRE really and truly is there for students to show us they have quantitative skills. Um, and that's really what we use it to look at when we discuss scholarship. We really want to see you, what your goals are, what your future is, your GPA, your background, your work experience, the um, recommendations. That is what we really use to determine scholarship. Of course, if you have a great score, that's never a bad thing. But I always tell students it's unfair in both ways. It, it would be the same thing if we had a really bad GMAT or GRE score, but the applicant was amazing everywhere else. I think it would be unfair to not either admit them or not give them enough scholarship. So we look at it the same way. If you do submit it and you think it helps your application, that is awesome. But we also don't want to you know, unfairly award scholarships um, based on just one test score. So we do look at everything holistically. Um, everything that you submit will be taken in consideration. If you submit a GMAT GRE score and it's great, we will definitely use that to make scholarship decisions. But if you don't submit it, you will not be negatively impacted in the scholarship consideration. Okay, thank you so much, Lisa. So someone asked, um, if you have a BSc and a master's degree, which of the two GPAs will you be used? I assume the person might be asking maybe like if you're trying to get a waiver or the school's average. 
That is a great question. I love it. So it, it's really weird. Um, I don't understand why. So I will give you the official answer and then the the admissions people's perspective answer. Um, so you have it. So the official answer is the University of California, Irvine looks at the bachelor's degree, even if you have a master's applying to this program. Why, I don't know, but that is their personal decision and you know, good for them. However, on our end, if a student has both their bachelor and their master, we review both. And that's a big reason why, and I think some of you might know why. We were all young when we did our bachelor's, or at least I'm assuming so. I don't want to, to uh, stereotype in general, but a lot of times bachelors are when we're a little younger, we're not sure what we want to do. Things happen and sometimes the grade point averages aren't as great because of a lot of different reasons. And when people go back and get their master's, they're a little more serious, they're a little more prepared, they know what they want and it's a much better score. Um, and for that reason alone, we do look at both scores. So if you're not as proud of your bachelor degree GPA, don't worry about it. You will, we will review your master's GPA as well. Um, but again, for one reason, bachelor is looked at and that's what we, what comes up, but we look at both. The other thing you can do is when you do the application itself, there will be a spot for uh, a written essay and not the video that I mentioned earlier. If you feel comfortable, and this is again, a personal choice, but if you feel comfortable sharing that and, and sharing with us why, that's a good thing. That helps us figure out an applicant and where they are academically. Just say, hey, my bachelor's degree wasn't as great. It was this much, you know, but then I went back and I got my master's and I had this grade point average and now I'm doing X, Y, and Z. That's really great for us because we get to see your progression. That's huge. And sometimes it doesn't stick out as much when we don't have that. So if you feel comfortable sharing your story and sharing why it was maybe not as great as you want it to be, I all mean share it um, in that essay part, and that will help us understand your progression, where you've been, but also, of course, where you want to go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. So we have a couple more questions. Um, so someone asked that since you have digital transformation as one of your programs concentration, do you have any classes centered around social innovation? Ooh, that is a great question. I think what I will share is the classes change from year to year. Um, so I'm not even privy to what's going on now because I am not a faculty member, but the faculty are very much uh, on the pulse of what is going on um, throughout the world and without the business world. And they will change their courses and the topics every single semester to make sure what we're teaching is as up to date and as um modern as possible. Um, we do have quite a number of programs in the innovation world. As you saw, we have an innovation um, uh, immersive. Uh, I just don't know for sure what programs are, or courses are going to be offered this year. Um, but again, you have my email address. I'll pop it back in so it can, can see it as, as we go through this chart. Um, but you can always email me and I can connect you with some of our faculty and get you more in touch with the specifics on what will be offered in the next year to come. Okay, awesome. Uh, we have another question asking that for international students or students who didn't school in the U.S., are you required to do a results evaluation using like WES just to understand where your GPA falls? Um, this is very common, especially um, for some for some schools in the U.S., but the person yeah, is asking yep. if that's required. Yep, that is a great question, uh, and it is not. <laughs> so yay, uh, we have some amazing staff on hand, and I give them so much credit because I could not do this, but that's okay. Um, when we get applicants and transcripts from around the world, we have different GPA calculations uh, that we use to make sure that we're translating the GPA that you have from the school you attended wherever into what it is on the U.S. side of things. So we do not require that, and we have really great people who go through and do that. I don't know how they do that, but their brain works magically and my brain does not work that magically. So um, we love it. So, and hopefully again, makes it easier for you. I think, I know I've said it before and you're probably like, Lisa, you know, stop trying to sell us on UCI. We get it. But again, on our end, we want to make the application process as easy for you as possible because we want to get to know you as a person. And sometimes we get people who get so stressed about the application and so worried. Um, and we don't want that. We want you guys to have a smooth experience so that when you do get to the interview stage, you're ready to go, you're you're forming, you're presenting yourself to us. And that helps us again, you know who's best for our cohort um, and who will be a great fit. Okay. Um, we have a couple more questions. Um, one of them is, as international students, you have mentioned that you have like a support system in the faculty that has to do with international students. 
are there affinity clubs that international students, Africans or Blacks could actually um could actually settle into the program with just knowing that you are not from the U.S. and you would like to sort of feel at home? Yes. So that's a great question. It's funny because timing wise is a great way for me to share this because this is happening now and I'm overseeing this and I'm excited about it. Um, So again, we have a great international center on campus to help with the logistics of getting here, the I-20s and the visa process, but that doesn't go to what you suggested, feeling at home, feeling comfortable, finding a community. So there's two clubs we have on campus. There is something called the Black Management Association. They are a group of great um black but sometimes mostly african-american right now uh, um, students and faculty who are there to support each other promote each other and have programming aimed at uh the black african-american experience however what we've been seeing and it makes total sense is not everyone who's from africa feels as home in an african-american group because it is very different stories it's very different backgrounds and it's very different um just experiences overall. So this year, for the first time in November, we are launching something called Mirage Global Initiative. This is a group for all of our international students. Um, we have, we've seen this everywhere else. Students coming from China and Taiwan don't feel comfortable in our Asian American uh, Pacific Islander group. So we're going, okay, wait, so we, we really need a group for our international students because you guys are having a very unique experience. You're coming from a different place altogether. You're traveling far and you're experiencing American culture, maybe sometimes for the first time. And it's, it's a trip. I will give you that. We're we're a very fun bunch, but it is very, very different. And we know that you guys have different questions and concerns than any of our other students have. Um, so this November, we're launching for the first time, Royal Global Initiative. What we hope to do is make sure we're connecting all of our international students with each other, which is important to make sure you have a home, but also with all the campus resources so that if you're feeling lonely, you want to find your community, you know how to find it through this organization. And on top of that, what we aim to do with the Global Initiative Group is host events throughout the year to really make sure we're addressing your needs and considerations. So one of the first things we're doing in November, which is our launch, is to host a session that really helps you guys promote yourself and market yourself in a U.S. market. We know a lot of people who come to school in the States want to stay for a couple years after and work here and before maybe going home or maybe stay for a longer time. You know, it's up to you. But we also know that you are going to be in the U.S. market for the first time and applying to jobs is going to be a little bit different. How your resume looks is going to be different. So we want to host sessions that are dedicated to our international students to make sure that you are being served in the best way possible. Your questions are getting answered and not a lot of that will not always happen in class because you're going to be with people from all over the place so it's hard to kind of focus in on questions from an international perspective so that's what we're hoping this group will do and we also want to do fun things and um, we're trying to actually this year um two of our graduate students that are incoming are actually on the UCI men's basketball team so what we want to do is do a fun trip to a basketball game which is a big popular sport here in the states uh might be popular elsewhere but it's one of our most popular sports so we said like let's do something fun we want to do the educational point get you networking, get you job opportunities, make sure you understand how to promote yourself in a U.S. market, but also let's get together with all your fellow students and like have a good time. So let's go to a basketball game together. Let's have fun. Let's cheer on your fellow students because the captain and I don't know if it's the co-captain, another player, but they are both going to be uh, students with us this year and we want to go support them as well. So we're really excited to um, have a trip to a basketball game. I don't know. I'm really, really excited um, to go see that myself. Uh, Lakers obviously are very big out here. I'm from New York, so I'm a Knicks fan, but I've been told I have to be a Lakers fan. Um, so I'm hoping I'll get to a, a Lakers game. But for now, I'm excited to check out UCI and see what that's like. And I hope that answered the question, hopefully. Yeah, yes, you did. Thank you so much. Um... Someone asks, what is the minimum GPA you accept for this program? I recall like during the presentation you had gone through this, if you don't mind just. Yeah, no, and that's a great question because our average is about 3.3, 3.4. But I think as I said in the presentation, that means it skews both ways. And I, I will say, I don't want to say that there's a certain minimum because it really and truly depends on a case by case basis. So if anyone has say a 2.5 to a 2.9 and they're worried about that, we really and truly look at it as a case by case basis and we'll fight for a student if we feel that they are amazing, but they have a lower GPA. Um, so that will literally depend on you as an applicant. Um, to give you some background, if someone has a lower GPA and there are some people on the admissions committee that are a bit worried about that, we look at, again, your application as a whole. We don't 
want to admit students based on one thing solely. So not just the GMAT GREs and not just the GPA, because we feel that doesn't quite represent who you are. Um, there was a moment in time, maybe you didn't perform on some tests. And I don't think it's fair to, you know, subject you to a decision yeah. based on one really bad grade or something like that. So I'll just say it's a case by case basis. We look at everybody's application holistically to make these determinations, um, especially if it's below a 3.0. And again, my biggest, biggest piece of advice is if you feel comfortable in that essay that you have to submit, share with us what happened. We had a couple of students in the past that had like a 2.5, which is on the lower end of our GPAs for sure. But they said, you know what? Well, I was in school. My grandmother got sick and she was the one who took care of me my whole life. And I really couldn't focus on school. And I did really, really poorly because I had to take care of her. And you you look at their grades and you look at the first half and then you look at, you know, when, once grandma got better and you see they were a good student, but that one time frame that they really couldn't focus on school because they were taking care of her, wasn't great. And then you look at their resume, you look at their uh, letters of rec, you look at their interview. And so we take into account a lot of things. So if you feel comfortable sharing what happened, why it happened, and again, how you progressed for us to see, okay, maybe you didn't do so great, but all the things you did to kind of do better on that and progress from that really bad GPA and or that really bad test score helps us see who you are as an applicant and see that you've worked through stuff. And that, again, it was one bad maybe semester and you shouldn't be you know, punished for one bad grade. Thank you so much, Lisa. I don't think we have any pending questions. Uh, I'm just looking through now to ensure that we captured everything. Um, Fosa, did I miss any questions? Um, no questions. Okay, awesome. Um, Do you have, sorry. Yeah, just just saying, if you missed your question, you you can also like, you know, unmute and maybe just add directly. But I don't think we missed any questions. Awesome. I'll do again, because I love sharing my email. I'm going to share it one more time oh, okay. uh, for everyone. I'm also going to share my LinkedIn. Feel free to connect uh, and chat. And again, if you want more questions, more time, I will get you information on consultations. I'll get you information on our student ambassadors and connecting you with current students. Um, again, a lot of our MBAs right now are at internships, which is great. But when they get back in September, they can share a whole lot of information with you. But feel free to connect, chat, email. As you can see, I love talking and I have a problem stopping. So let me know anything you have, any questions you want to chat with me. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm just gonna say this before we round up. This session is one of the sessions that if you fill the attendance form, you will get an application fee waiver to apply to UCI. So I feel like people have been asking these questions over and over again. And so this is just your last chance to be able to get your contact details. How long do uh, I can't hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, that kind of. Yeah, I'm sorry. My network is pretty bad. Um, but I was just trying to say, um, yeah. So I don't think we have any other questions. Um, thank you so much, Lisa. We are going to send you all of the contact details from the attendance oh, form, perfect. so you have the opportunity to connect with every student. But thank you so much for. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, we are really excited to actually host UCI for the first time, and we are hoping that we're going to see amazing numbers um, from this year, more prospective students, African students, interested in your program. And yeah, we look forward to further connecting with you. Thank you so much, everyone, for dialing in from wherever you are, um, and have an amazing Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us and taking your time to at least listen to us and even engage. Thank you. Thank you guys and enjoy your evening and have a great week ahead. Thank you.